click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, what's here? Welcome back to another fantastic chemistry video. And today we're going to talk about these two problems right here. This is a Zaitsev versus Hoffman problem. No doubt about it. We've got the same reaction occurring with two different types of bases. We have a small base and a large bulky base. So we're going to get different products. Notice the small base gives us the uh, more substituted product, the Zaitsev product. That's the major. The minor is the least substituted. That's the Hoffman product. The Hoffman product is the least substituted double bond. The Zaitsev is the most substituted double bond. So now in the bulky base gives us the opposite. The bulky base gives us the minor, or the, sorry, the least substituted double bond. And what's going on here? This is interesting. First of all, don't forget, E2 eliminations must be anti-coplanar. So let's set up the anti-coplanar here for this one. So we're going to explain the major product here and the major product here, and it's going to help us explain both, okay? So let's number the carbons. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So let's set up. There we go. One, two, three, four, and five. And there's the hydrogen there, no problem. So that's gonna give us the major product here. Now let's set it up so we have an anti coplanar to give us this product here. All right, so let's number the carbons. One, two, three, four, and five. So let's make this one red. So it'll be carbon, uh, carbon. Let's put the iodine, or the chlorine, sorry. Chlorine there. Hydrogen here. There we go. So this hydrogen and this chlorine are anti coplanar now. And let's put in the rest of the molecule here. Let me make sure I get the stereo chemistry right. Hold on. Push it in. Yeah, that's correct. And there we go. So that's the setup. Now, the anticoplanar really isn't all that important for this question, but it is good to remember that E2 must be anticoplanar. So I'm setting them up just to hammer that home that you've got to set up these transition states. or You have to set up for the right orientation to achieve the transition state. What I'm trying to get to here, though, is a big bulky base versus a small base. Now, the big bulky base is going to have to attack here to generate this product, right? So now imagine that you're a big bulky base. You want to attack this proton right here, but in order to get to it, you've got to circumnavigate around this ethyl group. Now the ethyl group's not humongous, but it's not small either. It's got some bulk to it. Now as this um, bulky base approaches this proton, it is going to be hindered by this ethyl group and by, by the quote-unquote bulk that's surrounding the internal protons. So the protons that are right here are more sterically hindered, shall we say. They're more, let me say it a different way, they're less accessible. Now what I tell students to think about is think about picking apples or picking oranges or picking berries or something like that. On the outside of an apple tree or an orange tree, there are lots of fruit. Those are the outside protons. So imagine those are the outside protons. You know, you can just go and grab one, right? The inside protons are harder to get. The inside oranges, the inside apples on a tree are harder to get to because the branches are protecting them, right? The branches are in the way of your hand. So you got to kind of maneuver your hand in there. Large people, people with big hands, have a harder time getting in there. Why? Because their hands are too big. Their base, 
the hands of your base in this case, are too big to get in there and grab those fruit, those protons. Smaller bases, like if you have a little child with you, they have an easier time getting in to, between those thorny branches to get the fruit because their hands are literally smaller. Now let's imagine that those protons in there give you a very desirable outcome. Those, if you pick an orange from the inside of the tree, that's desirable. That's more stable, for example. Get in there, and you can grab those fruit if you're a small base. If you're a large base, you can't. But a large base still wants to react, still has to react. So the large base is going to preferentially deprotonate here, or on carbon-1, if you will. Carbon-1 right there. So the larger base wants to deprotonate at carbon-1 because carbon-1 is more accessible. Remember, to have a chemical reaction, you, first, you must first collide. So if the bulky base has a hard time colliding with those protons, it's going to slow that reaction down. It's still going to occur. It's not perfect. Depending on how you set up, it's not always perfect. So having something that just slows it down a little bit from colliding is going to direct the reaction to react here and not here. Okay? That's, it happens. Okay? So the large bulky base prevents collisions at carbon number three. Prevents collisions here so that this mechanism can't work. So it, but it will allow reactions here because they can collide with these hydrogens more often. Now the smaller base wants to deprotonate at carbon-3 because it gives you the more thermodynamically stable product. So the transition state is going to be lower in energy. So it's going to prefer to attack here. So it's going to happen more often. The big base can't get in here as often, it, so it deprotonates here uh, preferentially. This is, known as, this is also called the kinetic product. It's a product that forms because it's the fastest to form, not necessarily the most stable. All right, now this is a somewhat of an abstract concept, so please try to wrap your mind around it. You may have to listen to this video more than once. You may have to refer to your book. You may have to read something, refer to other websites, or even talk to your professor, ask them to help you understand this concept. It really isn't difficult. It's all about collisions. All right, guys, so I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, slap that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know the kind of problems that you're working with in organic chemistry. Maybe I can help you out. And if you could, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really is helpful when you guys subscribe. It lets YouTube know that we're doing a good job. It also encourages me to keep making more and good content for you guys. And with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbetts at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.